Welcome to London. British weather, this is. Welcome to this glorious British weather and today we are going to look at this, the brand new Olympus 12-45 F4 Pro Lens. I deliberately choose the rainy British day to film today's episode because this is a direct response to someone who left the message saying that why didn't you go and test the weather sooner when you actually deliberately saying that there was a storm coming and you just do the unboxing without showing any sample images and things like that. So here I am. This is for you, mate, whoever that is. <laughs> anyway, so before I go any further, I would like to also address the point of an F4 zoom lens versus 2.8 because some of you guys are quite concerned about this whole F4 issue thing. And uh, right. Just not, let's not touch about Olympus. Let's go back to other manufacturers, you know, and uh, like Canon, Nikon days, you know, they they have both the 2.8 and the F4 Pro zoom lenses uh, uh, for, for many, many, many decades. I'm talking about not years, but decades. Um, because there are two types of photographers out there. You know, there are one that who really needed the speed in low light, so the 2.8 would totally make sense. But there was always the F4 version, which is a smaller, lighter, and also cheaper. Um, they're aiming at different kind of professional because like I mentioned in my last videos there are photographers out there who don't need the shell out of a few or the fast uh, uh, light capturing capabilities in low light situations so as simple as that um, I'm not suggesting you know uh, if you're a journalist you should get this lens because you may want that flexibility in case you do need that however for those who really value uh, uh, weight and uh, performance and everything else you know uh, if you travel a lot like a, a hiker landscape photographer uh, travel photographers you will definitely appreciate the weight saving coming from this lens especially you can get the optical quality as good as other pro lenses out there maybe even better which I'm gonna test out later um, uh, so this is really amazing so I do want to reiterate that F4 is essential and I'm very glad that Olympus finally introducing the F4 series of lenses Ooh, that's, that's quite a nice shot let's see if I can get this flower Right, this is pretty ridiculous, but this is pretty fun. So we get slightly faster shutter speed for this. Oh, maybe I should take a video of that. <sighs> I'm trying to get the drop at the drop. <laughs> not dropping so I know you guys like a little bit of a specs and which we never ever did for any of our reviews but since uh, I think it's quite a popular thing to do I might as well do something so I have written down the spec of this lens and first of all let me talk to you guys about something that is probably unprecedented in the Olympus world for lenses I mean um, this 12 to 45 f4 pro lens is the very first pro lens has a weather seal certificate for ipx1 rating right all the other pro lenses before they are all saying weather seal dust proof freeze proof and whatever proof uh, which is great fantastic we use it in all sorts of environments you can see that from all our videos before we did it in all kinds of weather conditions it's fine but this is the very first lens that actually has the same weather or uh, waterproof rating as the em1x and em1 mark 3 which is 
actually something to shout and celebrate about because um, even though that all the lenses may have the similar sort of weather sealness but this is the very first one that actually has certified to have that rating so which is mean it's good like today you know we're using on the rain it's completely wet now this lens and then it, it shouldn't be a problem because it is weather seal right and also it has seven circular blade apertures which means that you can capture some kind of very good bokeh but you might wonder f4 you don't get much bokeh from it well you're wrong because uh, you can put this lens into very close almost acting like a macro lens and you can blur out the background quite nice and creamy and then uh, i think it's pretty nice to have and moreover this is also the lightest pro zoom lenses you can get on the olympus lineup at the moment weighing it just over 250 gram which is actually very very light and it works much much better with a smaller body we're going to talk to you about in handling in a minute but let's go through that specs right this guy has basically all constructed with 12 elements in nine groups i never really bother about this to be quite honest if you're into the geeky thing it comprises of two high refractive elements one dual super spherical element one super high refractive element one as uh, two spherical's and two extra low dispersion element lenses in it to be quite honest this is one why we never do this whole thing because it doesn't make any sense to me as long as it performs well for me it's fine to be honest as a photographer you're probably more interested in the final output that's why we always show you the sample images coming from the lens instead of reading out the specs right okay anyway so um, apart from the IPM, IP, IPX1 rating that I'm really really kind of want to, to tell you about um, the, the rest is probably on a side note but now, let's look at the build quality. As name suggests, this is a pro lens, so uh, it has the same construction as any pro lenses currently in the Olympus liner, which means that it's fully metal built. Fully weather seal, like I mentioned, IPX1. <laughs> Great. And then also um, the zoom range is extremely smooth, even smoother in my, in my own experience. And uh, smoother than the, uh, the 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro and the 12 to 100 f4 Pro. So it's very, very smooth. And the focusing ring is very stiff, yet quite reassuring because uh, the thing is you know like unlike the other two lenses that I mentioned the 12 to uh, 40 f 2.8 or the 12 to 100 f4 pro both of them have the uh, manual clutch manual focusing uh, ring well this one doesn't have to manage um, the manual clutch but because it's quite stiff and then uh, when I say stiff it's still smooth but it just have a very high resistance to it which means that you can do pretty accurate manual, fo uh, manual focusing action I think it's it's pretty nice and overall I think it's just a uh, worthy for the pro batch because it's just a really great put together lens in the uh, yeah I can't I can't complain about quality like just like any Olympus products one good thing about this lens is the closest focusing distance it's just ridiculous so like what I need to do I don't even need to bother about anything just like slam the lens right into the rock yeah and you can take some really cool shot here. Look at that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Is it touching it? Bang. Whoa, look at that. Oh. There. See? Don't have to do anything. You just rest the camera on top of something. Look at that. It just like, it can get so close. Whoa, look at that. I can get so close with that. Shit. Woo. You know what? Tracy keep asking me to do this sort of stuff to see the details. I have no idea why. <laughs> Being a small and lightweight lens has one major benefit in terms of handling. Well, basically it's great because it's so small and light which means that no matter what camera you use it should be very very comfortable no more no matter how long you're holding the camera but having said that because it's so, such a small lens it actually works better with a uh, smaller body um, I would say anything 
but the M1X so basically because uh, M1X is a much much bigger camera and this would look kind of ridiculously ridiculously small in it um, but on an EM5 Mark III it's almost perfect fit like the Pen F or EPL series uh, even the EM1 Mark II or Mark III would be perfectly fine with this lens as well and uh, so I I have nothing to say apart from this is very very great handling. Um, I don't have my neck strap with me so I can't damage the, the, the normal kind of balancing thing with the thing uh, but if you're just holding it like this you can kind of see that it's not kind of swinging like kind of top heavy or back heavy and things like that so it's still relatively balanced and I, I, just, I just think it's a very very great handling lens full stop. Look, my lens is touching it. I can still focus, which is pretty damn good. Yeah, this is just so sick. Woo, look at that. It would be nice to have an ant walking on it. You know, if you guys are not really into macro stuff, but like occasionally you want to get close, this lens is ideal. Which it makes it even better for landscape photographers because sometimes you do want to get some leaves or frost or details and things like that. I think this is pretty awesome. Look, look at the toilet signs here. I can take some toilet signs. Tracy is complaining that it's too wet to do this review so uh, we're gonna have to find a shelter to continue and uh, yeah I don't know what the words for it you know in Chinese we could have lok tong gai or lo tang ji wet chicken I guess we are looking a lot more like a wet chicken uh, actually Tracy looks more like a chicken because she's wearing that that yellow jacket thing hey. right so you can see that um, we are now covered so I might as well use this opportunity to talk about image quality so not we don't get wet. Um, so just a very very quick words you know there's not much to it apart from saying it's fantastic it's spectacular actually. Um, I was shooting this lens uh, in multiple locations different situations earlier I was out there just shooting wide open f4 it's amazing and uh, you saw some of the macro stuff that I was doing I was just like really getting close in and the details that this lens can resolve is just mind-blowingly good and it's almost as good as the 60 millimeters macro lens because that that lens is just really awesome in terms of uh, 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 resolving powers and micro contrast and this thing is very very close to that um, so nothing to complain we'll just say it's really awesome worthy worthy of the pro batch um, having said that we are going to head back outside after lunch after you know we, we can recover from all the wetness that we had endure uh, go outside do a quick comparison between this this guy and then the uh, against the 12 to 40 f 2.8 pro and the 12 to 100 f4 pro just to satisfy your curiosity yeah it's not raining perfect timing so i've got my tripods out let's do some high res mode shots and then i uh, see all the details from the lenses i'm trying to compare so if you guys haven't been listening so i'm gonna do a comparison between the latest 12 to 45 f4 pro and the 12 to 40 f 2.8 pro and finally is the um, uh, the 12 to 100 f4 pro so if you're wondering what this tripod is which i will be doing reviews on which is a pretty cool one you might have seen this if you've been following us closely this is the ben roll uh, carbon tripod I cannot remember the actually the model number but it's a very very cool one which I'm going to tell you a bit more so stay tuned for that so today I want to do some high res stuff all right first let's enable try uh, high res mode here we go uh, I usually would go for just a half a second to minimize any movement and that's good that's fine so it should be high res yep high res enable All right, let's see what I can see from here. For the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to set everything into menu. Everything have the same shutter speed and aperture. So if I'm setting f4, which is the widest aperture on the 12 to 45, 
I will set the 12 to 40 f2.8 to f4 and the 12 to 100 to f4 as well. So, uh, yeah, so we all equal. But then now, for comparison purposes, to see the 2.8 against f4, to see whether there are any differences there. So, uh, let's try. Okay. Ooh, okay, that's fine. No blown bit. Okay. Huh? I am changing lens. To what? To 12 to 100 F4 Pro. Ding! Let's try another one. What are you looking for? I'm looking for softness in the corner. Which lens is it? 12 to 100. It's really good. Really sharp. What's this one? This is the 12 to 40 F 2.8 Pro lens. Right. Okay. Here it is. These comparisons of the three lenses. So first of all, let's look at three lenses at 12 millimeters so i'm highlighting this one here is the 12 to 45 f4 pro lens so i'm going to compare with the other three taken at f4 so let's have a look at the comparison first so this is the of course you can see 12 to 45 f4 pro and this is the 12 to 100 f4 pro lenses so this is at 12 millimeters um, at first glance, there's not much there. You know, they both are very, very equal. And now zoom in to 100%. It will take a little bit of time to to render, so just spare with me one moment here. And this is at one to one, so this is the pixel to pixel on screen. And then there we go. Right. Okay. Now you can see there is a little bit of difference in terms of contrast. But you can see the sharpness is definitely, definitely there. This is at f4, and then you can see it's very, very sharp. Both lenses are almost equal, and it's quite hard to tell apart from them. And this is the corner performance, and you can see at the edge here, that's an interesting thing. So if you look at the text here, and then uh, obviously the f. 4, 12 to 45 is actually a little bit sharper at the corner compared to the 12 to 100 so that is interesting so let's go back out so now let's look at the comparison to 12 to 40 f 2.8 at f4 right now let's go and punch in again let's go in so we might have to wait for the 2.8 lens to render once again so uh, let's have a look to see if the 12 to 40 f2.8 is the same as the other one right very good look at the f 2.8 lens at f4 is definitely rendering very sharp very very detailed and see all the lines here very contrasty very nice very solid um, the f4 lens is definitely showing a little hint of halo um, but it could be due to due to the condensations in front of the lens or just a little bit of um, uh, things going because we, we were wiping the front of the lens but anyway if you're purely looking at the sharpness it's very equal again the corner performance you can see that the 12 to 45 f4 is indeed a little bit sharper than the 12 to 40 2.8 at f4 so once again the corner performance of the 12 to 45 is superior so let's look at this one here now so this one is at 40 millimeters so this is the 12 to 45 f4 so let's go and compare the other two here so let's go and now compare so this is at 40 millimeters does this 12 to 45 this is the 12 to 100 and uh, let's zoom in to have a look right this is of course it's a much much bigger file so let's take a little bit of time to render I'm waiting for it to oh, sharpens up so this is the first one this is the 12 to 45 f4 
Pro lens at 40 mm at f4 aperture setting. Interestingly, the 12 to 100 looks a little bit smaller, even though it is at 41 mm setting. And uh, so you can see, ah, interestingly, it's a little bit soft and um, compared to the newer lens, but you can see that yeah, it's definitely not as sharp as the newer lens. And uh, right, let's go to the corner to see. Right. Okay. Right, you can see the corner. Also, the newer lens is definitely, definitely sharp. You can see all the details around all these stoneworks and everything like that. And uh, yeah, it's definitely, definitely sharper. So this is the 12 to 40 f 2.8 at 40 millimeters set to f4. So let's punch in to have a look at the same thing again. We have to wait for it to render a little bit. And then let's see what happened here. It would be interesting to see. This one looks more more equal, but even even so, at both at forty, the two point lens still seems a little bit short. And um, I I don't know what happened there, but then obviously you can see at both at forty millimeter setting. This is from the EXIF data, and. Uh, that's interesting to see. Right, okay, this is once again not as the, the performance between the um, the 12 to 100 and the 12 to 40 at 40 millimeters is very similar. A little bit soft, not as sharp at f4, and then uh, I suspect there is a little bit of movement there. I don't. I think it's due to a slight movement to the lens and when at time of capture and um, because this is high res mode you need to be very very still for that particular shot and uh, now let's look at the corners again yep it's very very similar in terms of performance here at 40 millimeters so let's bring one more in to check so this is at f4 at f4 now it's at 2.8 this would be interesting so let's punch in to have a look to see what's going on okay let's have a look at this now this is at 2.8 for the 12 to 40 so it's actually shooting a wider aperture it takes a little bit of time to render like any big files 15 megapixel raw file and um, yep definitely not as sharp as the newer lens so the newer lens is spectacularly sharp and that's for sure you can see that straight away and uh, let's look at the corner performance so yeah it's definitely definitely not as sharp as the newer lens so now let's go back out let's look at it one more time between 12 millimeters so um, let's look at them so this is the new lens at 12 millimeters this is the 12 to 40 f 2.8 pro at 2.8 let's see and then uh, to see whether which one is sharper indeed let's have a look this could be very interesting so the 2.8 lens obviously when it stops are supposed to be sharper and um, now we're looking at wide open at 2.8 whether it can match the performance okay let's have a look right you can see that the 2.8 lens has higher contrast definitely high contrast and due to the coating and differences and perhaps some of the elements in optical design slightly changed and you can see the color is slightly different even though I set exactly the same white balance and tint and uh, so everything should be matching and uh, I would say the sharpness at 12 millimeters the f2.8 lens is pretty amazing it's very good um, it's matching the newer lens Although it's because it's contrasty, so it looks sharper. But then, um, but if you kind of study a little bit closer, you can see all the lines and everything is basically equal. Once you tune in, or tune up a little bit of the micro or the clarity or texture in pose, this would can easily match the same performance as this one, or in terms of as uh, appearance anyway. So, pretty good, pretty good.
So this is the comparison between the all four lenses, uh, so three lenses at different settings. Although like mostly we were comparing these six photos here are uh, L at f4 aperture. So based on that, they are very very equal. But if you look at sharpness on its own, the newer lens actually the sharpest. So we've seen the results that they all produce really, really beautiful images and image quality is faultless, you know, between them all. Um, I wouldn't say which one is better, which one is worse. The only thing you have to consider about this lens is, of course, whether you understand your photography full stop. You know, all I can say is that this lens has packed so much in terms of image quality in such a tiny body. Uh, it's amazing on its own, you know, it's a technological feast on its own, you know, just, it's just brilliant. You look at the size of this thing, which fits really, really nice in a much smaller body. So for those people who are really treasure or prioritize the uh, portabilities and lightweight or weight saving, this would probably be it. Um, the, if I have to be nitpick, I'd be really critical about this and what I would prefer to see this lens have is menu clutch because I love using the menu clutch. Uh, maybe the lens function button so you can customize another button here for doing something else because all the pro lenses have a le uh, lens, uh, or not all, but most pro, uh, uh, pro lenses will have the uh, L function button for lens function button. And maybe, maybe the uh, inbuilt IS on this lens but having said that, if I include all those features into this lens, this lens would probably be a lot bigger and probably closer to the size of the uh, 12 to 40 2.8 lens. So by then you lose the weight saving and compact size advantage of this lens. So I guess my closing statement would be, it's a fantastic lens if you utilize those features such as um, uh, uh, landscape photography, cityscapes, um, things that require deeper depth of field or you have to hike a lot and this will be the perfect lens for it. I hope you enjoyed this video and if this is your first time in this channel don't forget to yeah hit that subscribe button and put on the bell notification so you know when our new review is coming out. Until next time, ciao ciao! This may not be the macro lens, but it has a ridiculously, ridiculously, yes. So I know you guys like to get, well, I'll go one more time. This is a direct response to my previous video, the unboxing video for the 12 to 48, uh, 48, 45, no, one more time, damn it. Sometimes people even do uh, focus stacking if, uh, with even uh, like, uh, a deeper aperture. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs>